Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show, and I've got a new friend on, and I didn't even ask him how he pronounces his last name, so I'm going to guess, and his name is Corey Poirier. Oh, you know what, Brad, you just nailed it. You did it better than I can. Well, I'm part French. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you totally nailed it. Yay, dun, 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 I get points. <laughs> you do, for <laughs> sure. Give myself a round of applause. <laughs> Sometimes that's hard, you know, my... My last name is Goodham, and people don't know how to say it, say it or spell it, so I just use Magic Brad, and they can figure it out, and that's, that's my brand on the internet, and just heck with the last name. I don't need it. Cher doesn't have one. You know, Madonna doesn't have one. Elvis doesn't have one. Eminem doesn't have one. I don't need one. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're right. <laughs> and have you ever heard of Neville Goddard? No, I've not. Okay, he's a, he's a thought leader, wrote books about, um, similar to what um, The Secret, Law of Attraction, he wrote sure. stuff about that in, the, I think it was like the early 1900s. Anyway, he went by just the name Neville. So Neville didn't need one. I just had to add that in, because that's a, that's a very well, obscure reference. So, Well, look at people like, I mean, a recognized brand, Apple. When I hear Apple, I do not think of the fruit. So no. they took that word and they made it theirs. They own it. So that's just a little marketing tip for anybody that's out there that's got an ear to hear about marketing Absolutely. stuff you know especially these days you got to create your own personal brand because in your situation you're not the only speaker on the planet so you need to have something that's unique and different and because you know because if they want to talk to you they need something that's a it's a catch to that kind of thing. so where do you live uh, i am based in the east coast in canada uh so mostly people uh the closest place most people know is nova scotia so sure. I'm about three hours from Nova Scotia or in a different direction. I'm about five, no, not five, three hours from the main border. I can hear the about part. Can you? About. If, people, yeah. if people don't know I'm from Canada, sometimes they pick it up. Sometimes they don't. But if I say about, if I use that word, then it's, I know. it's whatever. It's I know all. you Canadians. I used to do karate tournaments up in Duluth, Lake Superior. And the Canucks used to come down and with their Labatt's beer and party, <laughs> party, party. <laughs> oh, yeah. Canadians know how to party. That's for sure. Yeah, I remember we were sitting on the couch talking. And I says, hey, hand me a beer. And he goes, silver bullet. He throws it across the, the room and hits the wall. Splatter. Crazy guys. You guys <laughs> got to tone down a little bit now. Yeah, well, I'm a toned down Canadian now. I, I was that guy <laughs> uh, 15 years ago. But um, it, for six years now, I've been, uh, I haven't had a drink because my girlfriend is six years sober. Uh -huh. And we got together and she was only three months over. And I felt if she made that commitment and I'm not even addicted the way she was, then I can make the commitment. So I'm not the same guy I was in my twenties. Yeah. I quit drinking 20 years ago or so too. Cause I just tired of spending all that money and getting those hangovers and all that stuff. So yeah, totally I can think it. clear now. I think. 100%. <laughs> yeah, so you're no, married and got kids? Uh, not married yet. Uh, and I say yet, I mean, I imagine at some point that'll happen, but uh, my girlfriend uh, was married for eight years and she, her divorce went through about two years ago and it was a pretty nasty situation. So we've kind of just kind of been held our feet on it, but um, we do have a uh, three-year-old and we have a uh, just over three-day-old. Oh, wow. <laughs> so uh, we actually, in truth, it was last Friday, uh, three hours. So we were a week and three hours old. Fresh so one. It's pretty new. Fresh new. <laughs> Fresh and new. Well, that's cool. So let's talk a little bit about what you do or what you've done as far as your business and things, because that's what this is all about. It's about getting more business, making things happen, right? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it. And I guess the, uh, you know, the quick background version, and I'll say quick because, you know, with all of our lives, we could go on for hours about just what our background is, for better or worse. But um, really, at the end of the day, when people ask me what I do for a living, I always say what I would write on a form if I was asked by a government form occupation. And my answer is always keynote speaker. So I've been a speaker for 19 years, a paid speaker. You know, I had that in that that's an important part because there's a lot of speakers that don't get paid. Right. And in fact, I help other people get paid now to speak. But I've been a paid speaker for 19 years. And uh, some years, as many as 300 days on the road speaking, uh, the, the lightest year would probably be a hundred days. 
And this is now in the last probably 12 to 14 of those 19 years. And then, of course, this year is going to end up being my latest year for obvious reasons. Yeah. But, <laughs> but having said that, that's my core business is always been a keynote speaker. But, you know, the word hustle isn't as uh, negative as it used to be. So I'll say I've always had a side hustle. I had a newspaper for years, uh, five years, similar to Success Magazine, where I interviewed high achievers. That migrated into a podcast eight years ago. On top of that, uh, five years ago, I launched what we call our speaking program, helping people get paid to speak. A year and a half ago, I launched our branded talk program, helping people land TEDx talks, Goalcast, that type cool. of thing. And then uh, more recently, I, we launched what's called Blue Talks, which I often say it's if Chicken Soup for the Soul and Ted had a child, that would be Blue Talks. It's basically a stage and a platform where you can speak about anything all the way from business, life to universe, which is what Blue stands for, BLU, Business Life Universe. Okay. So that's me in what was that, a two-minute nutshell, Brad? No, oh, that's perfect. I mean, uh, we talked a little bit earlier when we were in the green room back there about the old speaking world. And because, like, I'm, I started in the event world or basically started in entertainment as a magician. That got me into events. And then I, my last event was March 4th. And uh, all of a sudden, COVID came and went, er, everything stopped. So I made a pivot. And that's what a, an entrepreneur has to do. So you've been doing this for a long time. And you didn't lay down and roll over when something happened. Because you, you share a little bit about that bizarre situation you had while you're on the stage. Yeah, so wh what you're uh, referring to was a very unique experience. I can say that not just like, a, you know, we all love to say, oh, nobody's ever been through this. But, and it's not that nobody ever has, I'm sure. But I can say it's unique because I have, again, 20 years experience. And I mentioned this to you off air. I invited a client to see me speak at 25 years. He brought his junior person and the lady who hired me to speak has almost 35 years. So whatever that is combined, what's that like 80 plus years, um, had never experienced it before. And I wrote an article for Entrepreneur Magazine and I had so many speakers say, Corey, I've never experienced that. So I know it's rare. Uh, but what it was is I was to, uh, paid to deliver a talk in a downtown core. I showed up at this venue. It was like a, like a concert venue that they were running the event in. Everything just looked really dark. Even when you went in the front of the building, and I didn't know why. And they, but they had generators, so you could see something. So I went up to the front desk, and I said, yeah, I'm here for this event. And she pointed down to this uh, hall, and I looked down there, and all you could see, it looked like a cave. It was just pitch dark. And so I walked that way, kind of never second-guessed it, but walked that way, and I'm walking slowly down the stairs. And it is literally just pitch dark. And I'm like, she must have pointed me in the wrong direction. So I walked back to the counter, and I said, yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking for such such event. She goes, yeah, they're down there. And I said, there's no lights on. And she goes, yeah, the power's there. Nobody told you? And I was like, ooh, that's new. So I, she told me they were down there for sure. So I went downstairs with my cell phone up, using the flashlight, calling up my client's name because I only knew the one person uh, that was involved in the event. And she said, yeah, I'm here. And I told her it was Corey. And she said, oh, my gosh, you're not going to believe this. And I said, well, I guess I am now because I assume you didn't turn the lights out just for fun. And so we got talking. And she said, I understand if you don't want to do this. So I've never experienced this. She said, it even, I, my, even my cookies got ruined in the microwave or something like that. They were heating up cookies or something. Like She was distraught. And so uh, she said, up to you. And so I said, no, I'm all in. I mean, I'm here. Let's make this happen. So I went into the room, and there was a guy speaking by candlelight. I'd never seen this before either. But it was weird because he had, he had his, where his laptop would have been, but he had like letters, I, I should say, writ, handwritten notes on a, a, like a tiny little – it wasn't like a podium, but a tiny little homemade podium and candlelight. I thought he's going to set those pages on fire. This could turn really bad. Uh, but he, he was shaking so much. You can see the paper just going like this. And I found out later it was his first talk ever. Oh, my God. So he's like, I, I talked to him after. He said, I'm never speaking again. I said, they're not all like this. Like, you just did the t Most people would have walked out the front door. Oh, For sure. you to even last here tells me that you can do this. But long story short, now my term was up. And so what I did. I had, I always believe in having backup plans. Well, in this case, I had a backup plan for the backup plan. And if, you know, you talked about pivoting, that's what I would say, Brad, is that you need to have backup plans if you want to pivot. And by the way, it doesn't have to be necessarily always you have a backup plan. It could be that you need, you, you need to know how to recover from this, that your backup plan could be a forward plan, but you need sure. to be able to figure out what to do here. So for me, what, sir, what saved me at this point is I always um, backed up my, la uh, my presentation onto a USB. So that would have saved me if the power was on. Like if power was on, but my laptop wouldn't connect or something. So that covers you in like 90% of the circumstances. This wasn't that 90%. Right. So I had my backup. And I, so I technically had a backup plan for my backup plan because I had two laptops and two USBs. But guess what? None of that was going to help me here. Right. Because 
Uh, the issue is I can't really stand now on the stage because there's no mic. So I need to be as close to the audience as possible so they can hear me and even walk through the audience. So I can't stand behind a laptop and watch my slides. So here's what I did. So uh, I had already as well emailed the slides to myself. Now the catch with no power out is the, <laughs> that wasn't even working either. But what I could do is I walked up uh, stairs. I walked outside to the perimeter because I still had time to where I could connect to the email. I emailed or I grabbed my email, PowerPoint presentation, saved it to my phone, came back downstairs and I was in, we had two spotlights where I could speak. So I sat, uh, I set up my phone on one of the tables and I told people, I just got to keep track of the time since the power's out. But really what I was doing was I was actually scrolling and all I have to see for me as a speaker, all I have to see is the slide sure. and, that, and I know where to go. But this was keeping me on track because as a high energy person, I could go off track easily. Sure. So that, that one thing, I used my phone as the PowerPoint and I would just go back and look at it every now and then. And then I would walk the room and go back and look at it. And at the end, the power came on about 15 minutes left and everybody just went, whoa, because we hadn't seen each other at that, till that point. <laughs> 250 people in the audience, including a speaker who was considering hiring me, who sat there in the dark the whole time. And uh, long story short is on the evaluation forums, almost every person said it was one of the best presentations ever. And it wasn't because I was great. It's because they actually couldn't be distracted. Because if they put on their phone, everybody would see it. So everybody was silent. Other than the people that maybe three or four that might've fallen asleep in the dark, the rest were there fully in tuned. And then uh, one person said in the evaluation form, maybe we should shut the power off in the future for all talks so people wouldn't be so distracted. So the end result is uh, that's the scenario that happened and that's sort of how I pivoted within. Well, I th I'm sure a lot of them were impressed too with your you know, persistence and to be able to work through all that kind of stuff. Because a lot of people would have said, you know what, let's do it another time. They, they would quit. But again, uh, as an entertainer, the show must go on. So you just keep on keeping on. So that's, that's very cool. I, uh, I admire it. And it's, just, uh, it's pretty fascinating how, I mean, the, 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 the quick thinking of going out, getting your email, and now you got all your presentation there. So a little a prompter, if you will, to keep you on track and stuff. That's pretty, uh, pretty smart being able to shift gears like that. So, well, I'll tell you, if I were to do it again, I would, I would have brought a, now that I know this happened, I would have brought a um, iPad with me because then I could have literally sat it up as my presentation. Yeah, if and you, you would have known, right? Up. Yeah, and <laughs> I could even use my phone as a clicker. Like there is ways around that now. You wouldn't even need to be connected to the internet. You could oh, have definitely. Just put but the, the but now is, that I know it, I would plan differently again, but you just have to have a, a backup plan. And by the way, the meeting planner who came in with the 25 years experience he ended up hiring me and I asked why did you hire me like you couldn't even like like that wasn't a good a normal situation he goes that's why I hired you he said because I get to see people when they're at their best but he said if I can see how somebody deals with a crappy situation I know how they're going to deal with it if we run into it at our event sure so this is a side note well it's something like that you just can't foresee like I thought events are going to be on forever because people want to connect with events I've never been through a pandemic but when I did my event planners expo on in March 4th and then on like March 12th everybody says you can't do that I'm thinking what am I going to do now? <laughs> so I pivoted towards online marketing and doing these interviews and things just to keep the ball rolling. And you've just got to be innovative like that. But let's Absolutely. talk a little bit about your, uh, your TED Talk slash the secret thing. Yeah. So you mean the, the Blue Talks? Or Ooh, yes. The Blue Talks? Uh, yeah. So, uh, which is kind of funny because I got it. We got to keep building it. So the point is that we're point where everybody knows it. Now we haven't even actually officially launched. We launched next month. But I say this because when I do interviews, a lot of people say BLU talks. And so I got to make sure I let people know it's blue talks because it's so new. Um, we started it a year ago as far as pre-launching. Uh, the short version of how it got launched is clients within my speaking and TEDx program were coming to me saying, I'd love to deliver a TEDx type talk. But let's say, for example, I want to deliver it on spirituality. Let's just say that's the example. What well, TEDx, that's not the platform for TEDx. Like they don't, you know, they, you, you don't go up on a TEDx stage usually and speak, speak with synchronicities, let's say, or holistic healing. It's just not their, their appetite. And yeah. so I wanted to refer them to places, but there was nowhere to refer them. So I started realizing, okay, I have, as Zig Ziglar would say, I have a moral obligation to create this now because I can't give them an answer as to where to go. Um, so, but I always, I'm also a big fan of TEDx, so I didn't want to lose the idea of business talks and life stories and stuff like that. So that's kind of where the name Blue came in is that biz, B uh, is for business, L is for life, and U is for universe, and the universe is the synchronicity side, so it was the catalyst. But essentially, I decided we need to create a platform where people can speak about anything, essentially. And so we recorded uh, four, day, four separate events 
where we record it just like TEDx would to send out videos. We recorded four of those in late fall. No surprise, we had some scheduled for spring that got moved now to the fall. We'll sure. see what happens again in this fall. But uh, we do have 40 talks filmed, 40 some, and we're going to start launching on August 11th weekly. So what that means is that every week we're going to have a new talk come out. And then on a uh, second video that same week, will be like a special type of um, exclusive content from a blooster. We call them bloosters. How long uh, are the so, talks? Uh, all under 30 minutes. Most okay. of them are 20 and some of them are 10. Uh, so, but that sweet spot is usually 20 minutes. So we've kept most of them there. And uh, yeah, so it's gonna, they're also gonna start coming out weekly at the same time as we're launching a podcast, the same day, weekly, a book series. That's re it's already written, it's done. The first book in the series is ready to launch. So we're basically launching, Brad, an entire community on day one. We already did some virtual events uh, around it as well, because I want to give more stages to those speakers now that we can't do, the, as you just said, the live stages. And that wasn't planned originally. Um, our first events we ran got 20 plus thousand viewers. So, so, so you, will, will you have live events again when it opens up? 100%. We actually okay, have them cool. scheduled now. It's just a question of whether what's going to happen in the next three or four right. months. We, we, have, don't, we don't know. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. And I mean, I, I'm quite prepared to push them again because I want them to go forward. But we have uh, the latest one in the year is November 24th and 25th at Columbia University in New York. And it's hard to, it's hard to say whether that'll go ahead or not. Because by the way, we're only a small group, like 100 and some people. And we can even social distance it down to 50. So, it's, so somebody would say, well, it's not going to go ahead in November. But it could because New York has gone through the toughest part. Uh, if they don't get a second wave, which they likely will, but if they don't, then it's still conceivable that we'll be able to run in late November because they're opening for the fall. Well, some people in the event industry, because I kind of have my finger on that pulse, um, they're kind of reopening drive-in theaters and doing it that way, projecting it, and then everybody's in, the, in their cars in their own little cocoons. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> that, I mean, that's not even a bad idea. The only thing that's challenging with us is we – uh, started the idea and the people that came on board came on with the idea that we want to run the events at Epic universities. So yeah. it, it's hard to kind of go from Columbia, let's say university to doing the drive through thing because people signed on wanting to be at Columbia university. Oh, sure, now, sure. but at the same time, but it's, it's a definitely what we could do in the, in the spring. If we have to push these events, what we could do in the spring is run the events as we plan, but also insert some ones in the middle doing the drive in thing. Are you planning on maybe coming to the Minneapolis area? It, it, I'm really? sure it'll happen because the, the idea with this is like TEDx, we want to be global. Like we want to go everywhere. And so, so far we've gone to Western Canada, San Diego, and uh, Harvard, right at Harvard University. Um, the fall stuff we have scheduled is at Harvard again, Columbia, and uh, U of A, which would be uh, uh, University of Alberta in Western Canada. So that's, oh, cool. that's kind of the plan right now. Let's kind of stay in touch on that because it falls in line with the whole business thing and the universe concept. Um, I've got a platform that I was trying to get going online that was dealt with like career finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness because it's more of a lifestyle. Yeah. And it never really got any that. traction on it, but uh, keep it on, keep it on. You never know when it might uh, get some roots. <laughs> 100%. Is there anything else that you've got? Um, I, I also like keep these kind of condensed, so uh, like, don't do them too long, but is there any way of people getting a hold of you or is there anything else that you can offer? Yeah, uh, so a couple of things. One, uh, the other thing that I've been working on and we're going full in on it right away is the, uh, the new book that I just launched. Um, it's called The Book of Why and How. And it's kind of exactly as it sounds. It's about how to find your why and your purpose, but then bigger than that, perhaps, it's what to do when you found it. So, Great. you know, I, I've interviewed now over 6,000 thought leaders, and it's basically within that book, you find the summary of what I've learned about how they do it as well. Uh, but the book is with Morgan James Publishing. So it's a New York publisher. Uh, we got, uh, we did the launch right around the pandemic starting. I was telling you this sort of in the green room as well. Um, so we're doing a major relaunch in September. I kind of, a lot of people said you should do the push the launch uh, during the pandemic because there's so many people home reading. But it was right during the pandemic, so that was all anybody could think about. And so I just needed a, my own breather. Uh, having said that, uh, the other thing I'd like to do, though, because you mentioned is there anything I could give people, mm -hmm. is we also have a book I'd love to give uh, the listeners here, which uh, it's free. It's a digital book, but it's a full-size, real-deal book called The Book of Public Speaking. And since we talked about speaking, it's basically uh, me trying to, one more time, give people the assets and tools they need to get on stages and crush it. Uh, so the book is actually available for free for anybody at 
thebookofpublicspeaking.com. So it's easy to remember thebookofpublicspeaking.com. And then the book of why I mentioned, if that's more up somebody's alley, like they want to figure out their why or their purpose or what have you, uh, not to give people too many websites, but that one's thebookofwhy.com. Yeah, I'll put them yeah. in the thing and people will re relate to it and they'll click on what they need to. And I, I like the concept of that book because that was part of the problem with that movie is people didn't, you can't just imagine a new Corvette in your driveway. You have to do the how and take some actions. And that's what a lot of people, there was some controversy about that. And uh, it's interesting because I interviewed a lot of those people on, uh, there's a new movie out called, um, I forgot what it's called now. How it, Thoughts Become it. Things, I think it is. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. I'm, I'm, I'm well, liking it, Corey. That's cool. Well, uh, and, so, and Brad, not to reject it, if I can tell you one last super quick thing sure. um, about what you just said, because I think it's very relevant, so I don't want to leave and not say this, but just in the last year, I've interviewed five people that were in The Secret, uh, some of them multiple times, but at least each one, five, five people each once. And what they talked about was the struggle they had was that the movie, to your point, didn't give a lot of action. And what's really interesting is before I even interviewed them in the book that I'm talking about, because it was written three years ago, one of my, one of the things I share is the law of action and how I talk about how without the law of action, the attraction part is just a hope strategy. You know, like if you don't actually get off the couch and do the work, then the attraction part isn't going to be as beneficial. It's not, you know, if it, if it is a magnet that you draw towards you, you might draw it a little bit towards you, but if you don't stand up in front of it, it's never going to happen. So I'm glad you said that because I think the no question, the secret uh, impacted millions of lives and it probably changed thousands, but I feel like it could have changed even more if it would have focused a little more on the actions. Well, it might so not have been ready because that was uh, something that was an awakening for a lot of people, like what the bleep and all that kind of stuff. It was an awakening and they didn't, maybe it would have been too much, but we do live in a physical That's world. That's why you need to take some physical actions to move that energy. Otherwise it's like, you know, treading water. You're just going to push it around. You got to be able to solidify it somehow. So 100%. <laughs> I just want to share that part. Absolutely. Well, this has been really, really fun. I've, uh, I've enjoyed it. And um, if you want to stay on, we'll have another little chat, but I'm going to sign this one off and beam it up to the universe and see who can have find it. And if uh, you would help share it also, and any of the listeners, if you could use that share button and get that out to the world, because that's how this all works. The internet is moving dynamically and always changing. <laughs> 100%. So I appreciate you, Corey. Thank you. Peace.